Welcome to the scoring clinic for AAU Volleyball. In this clinic, you will learn all you need to know about keeping score for an AAU Volleyball match. You will need to print a copy of the AAU score sheet so you can follow along during this presentation. On this slide, you can see examples of different sheets that are used for AAU scoring. These include a two-set non-deciding score sheet, a deciding set score sheet, a Libro control sheet, and a lineup sheet. Let's look at the different parts of the score sheet you will be using to keep score. During this presentation, we will discuss what is contained in each section. Here you can see the heading information, the captains, time and team information, service order, service rounds, the scored substitution section, the substitutions row, the legal substitutions area, which is not used in AAU scoring, the timeouts box, the points columns, the results, the signatures, the officials names, the sanctions box, and the remarks section. When you first arrive at the score table, you will check to see if the heading section of the score sheet is already filled out. Many tournaments pre-print the heading information. If not, you will want to complete this information in either blue or black pen, making sure that all entries are written in capital letters. For the match you are keeping score on in this clinic, the name of the competition is 2018 AAU National Championships. The competition is being held in Orlando, Florida at the Orange County Convention Center. You are keeping score for pool R1 P12 on match number two. It is important that this information is filled in so there will be accurate posting of match results at the conclusion of the match. You are keeping score on a women's junior match so you will place an X in the box next to women and an X in the box next to junior. The level of play is 16 open so you write 16 O in the appropriate space next to the level. In this match we have blue versus red. Today's date is June 20, 2018. Note that there are leading zeros on the month and day if they are single digits. Since the month is June, you see that this is designated as 06 on the score sheet. The court number is court 10. The time, which is noted in the heading section, is the time the match is scheduled to begin, and not the actual start time. The match today is scheduled to start at 9 a.m., and this will be noted in international time of 0900, which includes a leading zero. If you need a cheat sheet, you will find an international time examples at the top of the score sheet. If this were a 2 p.m. match, you would write the time as 1400. Next, still using PIN, you will fill in the officials printed name section, again written in all capital letters. The first referee for the match is John Smith, and the second referee is Mary Jones. You record John's name as shown here in the first referee section, writing his last name first, followed by a comma, and then the first name. You'll use this same format for all names recorded on the sheet, last name, comma, first name. Next, fill in Mary's name in the second referee box. You see that the scorer's name, Emily Johnson, is entered in the scorer's box. The work team is the name of the team that is providing the support crew for the match, and the region is where that work team is from. You can see that for this match, the name of the work team is purple, and they are from the Florida region. When the referees give you the results of the coin toss, you use PIN to write the team names on the appropriate side of the sheet, again in all capital letters. From your viewpoint at the score table, blue will be serving from the left so their team name will be placed in the team box on the left-hand side of the sheet. The team who starts the match on your left for set one will be team A throughout the entire match. Next, you place an X over the circle S to show that blue has the first serve for this set. Red is occupying the bench on your right for the first set and are receiving, so place their name in the team box on the right. They will be team B for the match. Put an X over the R in the circle on the right side of the score sheet to show that red will be receiving the first serve of the set. You also place an X in the first service round box under position 1 for red. You do this since team B will line up in service order on the court for the start of the set and will not serve until there is a loss of rally by blue. 
When red receives the ball, they will rotate and their first server will be the player in position two. The teams will give their signed lineup sheets for the first set to either you or the second referee at least two minutes before the end of the last warm-up period. Between sets, the teams must turn their lineups in at least 30 seconds prior to the interval between sets has expired. When you receive the lineup sheets, you will look for the following. There are no duplicate numbers anywhere on the lineup. One of the regular players has a C next to his or her number denoting who the game captain will be. There are numbers or an X in the Libro boxes, and the coach has signed the lineup sheet. If you find duplicate numbers or one of the other items is missing, ask the second referee to verify the lineup information before entering it on the score sheet. If you receive a lineup sheet that has one or both of the Libro boxes blank, have the second referee verify the Libro information with the coach. If the team will not be using any more Libros than what are already marked on the lineup, you will place an X in one or both boxes to designate that there will be one or no Libros for the set. Also remember that the teams must turn in a lineup for every set. They cannot ask you to use the lineup from a previous set. Once you have the lineups and have checked them over, you will enter them on the score sheet using PIN. The player number in the Roman numeral 1 box on the lineup sheet is entered into the Roman numeral 1 column on the score sheet for that team. It does not matter if a team is serving or receiving, the lineups are always entered onto the score sheet the same. For blue, you will enter the lineups like this, 15, 8, 10, 47, 23, and 2. You will then record the numbers 11 and X in the Libro boxes on the blue side of the score sheet. Number 10 is designated as the game captain, so that is the number that will be written in the circle of the captain section. AAU does not use roster captains, so the square in the captain section will always have an X. Once you have finished entering the lineup for blue, you will enter red lineup in the same manner, 9, 3, 1, 14, 5, and 7. In the blue Libero boxes, you will enter 16 and 20. The captain in the circle will be 5, and you will enter an X in the square. During the match, it is important that you work closely with the second referee. Before the set begins, it is a good idea that the second referee checks the score sheet to see that the lineups have been entered correctly. He or she will then take the lineup sheets for both teams and check the rotations on the court. At the same time, you should check the team lineups of both teams working with the second referee to ensure that all players are in the correct position on the court for the start of the set. If you see a player on the court that you think might be in the wrong position, bring it to the attention of the second referee when he or she places the lineup sheets back on the table. When the first referee whistles for the first serve of the set, you enter the starting time for the set using PIN. You can see that the first referee whistled for serve at 9.05 a.m. So you will write 0905 on the score sheet since all times are written using international time. If you are using pencil to keep score, you can start using pencil after recording the start time of the match. Blue number 15 serves to start the match. When she serves the ball, you will place a small check mark on the one in the first service round box. Blue wins the first rally of the set so you will slash point one in the blue points column. Blue number 15 serves again. There is nothing to be done on the score sheet since the check is already in the first service round box for number 15, but you must visually check that the correct player contacts the ball for service. The serve ball went out of bounds, so number 15's term of service is over. You need to enter the exit score of blue in the check service round box under player number 15. The exit score is the total number of points in the points column for that team at the end of a term of service. You will see the first referee award the ball and a point to red, so you will slash the next point in the points column for red, in this case, point one. The score is now blue one, red one. Let's talk about some other things that you will need to know while keeping score. There are a few instances where you will not check the number in the service round box. If the wrong server contacts the ball for service, you will not place a check mark on the number in the service round box. This is why it is important that you look at the player every time the ball is contacted for service. You must know when it is a wrong server. If this does occur, you will notify the second referee after the ball has been contacted for service. 
The referee may let the play continue, or she might immediately whistle and signal out of rotation. She may also look at the score sheet to confirm that the player was the wrong server. While the second referee is putting the players in the correct order, you will enter the exit score in the correct service round box of the player who should have contacted the ball for service. Another example of when you will not check the service rounds box is when a team loses the ball without contacting the ball for service. This can happen when a server does not contact the ball in the time allowed by the rules, which is 8 seconds for players 15 and older and 5 seconds for 14 and under. If the player does not contact the ball, simply enter the exit score in that player's service round box. The third example of when you will not check the service rounds box is when the last point of the set is scored on a side out. In other words, the team who receives the served ball wins the rally and the set. In this case, you will only enter the set point as the exit score for the server who would have served the ball next for the winning team. As you look at the score sheet, you will see service round boxes under each position for serve numbered from 1 to 8. For the first rotation of serve for each position, you will check boxes with the number 1 in the service round section. For the second rotation of serve, check boxes with the number 2, and so forth. Let's go back to the set you are currently keeping score on. If you remember, the score is currently 1 to 1. Serving next will be number 3 for red. As the player goes back to serve, you see that it's number 3, the correct server. So when she contacts the ball for service, you check the first service round box under her position as shown on this slide. Her serve is an ace, so you slash point two in the points column for red. As red number three serves again, you only need to be sure that the correct server contacts the ball. There is nothing to do on the score sheet. When the rally ends in a point for red, you slash point number three in the points column. Red number three commits a footfall on her next serve, so her term of service is over. You enter the exit score of three in the check service round box since the team has a total of three points. You now slash the next point for blue and their points column since they were awarded the ball and a point by the first referee. When blue rotates, libero number 11 replaces eight in position one to serve the ball. It is legal if a team has designated more than one libero for both libros to serve, but only in one position in the rotation. Once a libero has served in the set, it is illegal for either libero to serve in another position for that set. They will be able to serve in a different position in subsequent sets of the match. Since the libero can only enter the game through replacements, not through substitution, and is not noted on the lineups or the score sheet, you will mark things differently when a libero serves. When number 11 contacts the ball for service, you still check the service round box under the correct position, which is Roman numeral 2, the rotation in which number 8 is the regular player. And you will also draw a triangle around the Roman numeral 2 in the service order. The triangle denotes the only position in which the libero for blue may serve for the remainder of this set. When blue rotates, the libero replaces number 8 and goes back to serve. When the Libro serves, in addition to checking the service round box, you will place a small triangle on the Roman numeral in the service order where the Libro serves. If the ensuing rally results in a point for the Libro's team, the point in the points column will not be slashed. Instead, a triangle is used around the correct point. Since Libro number 11 serve results in a point, you will triangle point 3 in the blue points column as noted on this slide. Blue number 11 serves for two more points, so triangle points 4 and 5 in the points column for blue. She then serves the ball into the net, so you will enter the exit score of 5 in the check service round box for blue number 8, and then slash the next point for red in their points column. As red number 1 goes back to serve the ball, you make sure that she is the correct server. You see that she is as she serves the ball, so you check the first service round box for number one. Red scores a point on the ensuing rally, so you slash point number five in the red points column. Red number five then serves for three more points. At the end of each rally, you slash point six, seven, and eight for red. The score is now red eight, blue five. Before the first referee whistles for the next serve, the coach for blue requests a timeout. You enter the score for each team in the first timeout box on the blue side of the sheet. 
Since blue requested the timeout, their score is written first, followed by red's score. As you can see, you write 5 to the left of the colon and 8 to the right of the colon. Whenever a team causes or requests an action, their score will be recorded first in the correct location. For timeouts, you can see that each team is allowed two timeouts per set since there are only two boxes for each team on the score sheet. After you have recorded the scores in the timeout box, you will visually show the referees how many timeouts each team has taken. To do this, hold up your hands with the right hand showing how many timeouts have been used by the team on your right and the left hand showing how many timeouts have been used by the team on your left. In this instance, since Blue took the timeout and they are on your left, you will hold up your hands with the pointer finger on your left hand extended and your right hand closed in a fist. During each timeout, you want to check that the visual score is correct, the number of substitutions matches the total team subs, and that the score change entries for those substitutions are recorded correctly. The second referee will also check the score sheet or ask you if everything looks good. After the timeout is over, the teams return to the court and you will give the ready signal to the referees by holding your arms straight up with palms facing out. When the server goes back to serve, you check to make sure it is still red number one. And when you see it is, there is nothing to be done on the score sheet since she had already served before the timeout. She serves for a point, so you slash point nine for red. Red number one then serves the ball out of bounds, so you enter the exit score of nine in the check service round box. Then you slash the next point, point number six, in the blue points column. You watch as blue number 10 serves the ball and see that she is the correct server. So you check the first service round box under her position. Blue scores a point on her serve, so you slash point number seven in the blue points column. Number 10 serves again and blue scores another point, so you slash point eight in the blue points column. The score is now blue eight, red nine. Before the first referee beckons for the next serve, red number two enters the substitution zone. The second referee whistles the request and you see that two is substituting into the game for number one. You will enter the two in the scored substitution section in the first box beneath number one to the left side. You then enter the score for each team on the right side of the box, listing red score of nine to the left side of the colon since they are the team making the substitution and blue score of eight to the right side of the colon. Then slash the next number in the substitution row. Since this is the first substitution red has made, you are slashing the number one. When you have recorded all information on the score sheet for the substitution, give the ready signal. Here are some substitution rules that you need to know as you keep score. Each team is allowed 12 substitutions for each set with no limit to the number of times a player may enter the court as a substitute. You want to make sure to inform the second referee when a team has taken their 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th substitutions. Of course, if the second referee asks you to notify him or her sooner, you will also accommodate that request. Once a player has entered the game in one position in the rotation, that is the only position he or she may play for the remainder of the set, but there is no limit to the number of players who may play in one position of the rotation. But once someone plays in that position, that player is locked into the position. Let's get back to the set that we are keeping score on. Looking at the sheet, we know the score is blue 8, red 9, and we can see that the current server is blue number 10. Number 10 serves for two more points for blue, so you slash points 9 and 10 in the points column, and then 10 serves the ball into the net. You enter the exit score of 10 in the check service round box and slash point 10 for red in their points column. The correct server for number for red, number 14, serves the ball, so you check the first service round box under her position, and red wins the ensuing rally, so you slash the next point, number 11, in their points column. Red number 14 serves three more times, and red wins a point on each of those three serves. You slash the numbers 12, 13, and 14 in the points column for red. The score is now red 14, blue 10. Before the next serve, blue number 14 enters the substitution zone and the second referee whistles the request. You see number 14 substitute into the game for number 47. So you enter 14 in the scored substitution section in the first box beneath 47. You then enter the score for each team listing blue score of number 10 to the left side of the colon and red score of 14 to the right. 
slash the number one in the substitutions row for blue, and once you have completed recording all the information, give the ready signal to the referees. You make sure that the correct server, red number 14, contacts the next serve, and when the rally results in a point for red, use slash point 15 in the points column. Red number 14 serves again, but the rally is won by blue. So you enter the exit score of 15 in the check service round box for red and slash the next point for blue in their points column. The score is now blue 11, red 15. Blue number 14 contacts the ball for service. And since you checked to make sure she was the correct server, you check the first service rounds box. When blue wins the rally, you slash point 12 for blue. Blue number 14 serves three more points, and at the end of each rally, you slash the correct points in the points column for blue. Number 14 serves the ball one more time, and red wins the rally that follows. You enter the exit score of 15 for blue in the check service round box, and slash point 16 in the points column for red. As red number 7 goes back to serve, you look at the score sheet and see that number 5 should be serving next. As she contacts the ball for service, you double check the sheet to make sure that you are correct. And when you see that you are, you tell the second referee that the wrong player has contacted the ball for service. Since the correct player did not contact the ball for service, you do not put a check mark in the service round box. You just enter the exit score of 16 in the service round box for the player who should have contacted the ball for service. You will then slash the next point, 16, for blue in their points column. There is no other information needed on the score sheet for a wrong server. The score is now tied at 16. As blue number 23 serves the ball, you first check to make sure that she is the correct server. And when you see that she is, you check the first service rounds box. At the end of the rally, which is won by red, you first enter the exit score of 16 in the check service round box, and then slash the 17 in the red points column. Number seven, the correct server for red contacts the ball for serve, so you check the first service round box under her position. The rally is won by red, so you slash point 18 in the red points column. Number seven serves for three more points, and at the end of each rally, you slash the next point in the red points column. After red scores point 21, blue number 47 enters the substitution zone, and the second referee whistles the request. You see that 47 enters the game for number 14, a legal substitution, since it is the same position that 47 has already been in. You will enter the 47 in the scored substitution section, and then enter the score with the blue score of 16 to the left and red 21 to the right. Then you slash the 2 in the substitution section for blue, showing that this is their second substitution. After you have recorded all of the information, give the ready signal to the referees. Red number 7 serves for one more point, so you slash the next point, 22, in the red points column. Number 7 serves again, and blue wins the subsequent rally, so you enter the exit score of 22 in the check service rounds box, and slash point 17 in the blue points column. As blue number 2 goes back to serve the ball, you make sure that she is the correct server and then check the first service round box under her position when she contacts the ball. Blue wins the rally, so you slash the next point, 18, in the points column for blue. Number two serves again, and blue wins point 19. Before the first referee whistles for the next serve, red calls for a timeout. In red's first timeout box, you enter red score of 22 on the left and blue score of 19 on the right. You then let the referees know that each team has taken one time out by holding up your pointer finger on each hand. As the teams are returning to the court after the time out, the first referee assesses red number 14, a red card due to unsporting conduct. You will record the information about the individual sanction in the sanctions box on the score sheet. Since a red card was shown indicating a penalty on the player, you first write the player's number in the P or penalty box. Next, you will indicate that number 14 plays for team B by placing a B in the box under A or B and the number 1 in the set box since this is the first set. The score at the time the penalty is assessed is 22 to 19. And since a penalty is assessed against a red player, you will write red score first. When a penalty is assessed, the opponent wins the serve and a point. 
So you slash the next point in the blue points column, number 20, and then circle that number to show that it was earned on a penalty by the opposing team. Here are some basic tips to remember about sanctions. All sanctions are enforced for the match, so you must note all sanctions on subsequent score sheets for the match. When a warning is given, there is no further penalty, but the warnings are recorded on the score sheet. When a penalty or red card is assessed, whether it is an individual or team, the opponent will receive the serve and a point. For an expulsion and a disqualification, there is no other penalty. You will record the sanction on the score sheet, but the opponent will not receive a point. When the referees inform you of any sanctions during the match, you will record them in the sanctions box as shown here. In this example, Team A received both a delay warning and a delay penalty in the first set. Team B number 10 received an individual warning. Team B received an improper request. Team B's coach was expelled. And Team B's player number 3 was disqualified in the second set. Going back to the current set, remember that blue number 2 was serving before red called a timeout and a sanction was assessed to a red player. You see that number 2 is still the correct server and watch as she contacts the ball for service. Red wins a subsequent rally, so you enter the exit score in the check service rounds box and slash the next point, 23, in Red's points column. You check to make sure that Red number 9 is the correct server as she goes back to serve the ball. Since there is now either a check and a score or an X in all first service round boxes, you make the check in the second service round box, which is directly below the first service rounds box for all players. Blue wins the rally, so you enter the exit score for red in the check service round box and slash the next point, 21, for blue. The correct server for blue, number 15, serves the ball, so you check the second service round box under her position. And blue wins a subsequent rally, so you slash point 22 in the blue points column. Number 2 second serve goes long, so you enter the exit score of 22 in the check service round box under number 2 and you slash point 24 in the red points column. The score is now blue 22, red 24. As red number 3 goes back to serve, you look to make sure she is the correct server. When she contacts the ball for service, you check the service rounds box under her position. When the serve ball goes into the net and the first referee awards the ball to blue, you enter the exit score of 24 in the checked service round box and slash the 23rd point in the blue points column. You see that blue Libro number 11 is going back to the service position, so you look at the score sheet to see if this is the correct position for a Libro to serve. Since there is a triangle around the Roman numeral for this position, it is legal for number 11 to serve. Libro number 11 serves the ball, and after a long rally, Red wins the point. You record the exit score of 23 in the check service rounds box and slash point 25 in Red's points column. Since Red won the set on a serve by the opponent, no check mark is entered in the next service rounds box for Red number 1. You only enter the exit score of 24 in that box. Red wins the first set of the match, 25 to 23. After you enter point number 25 in the service rounds box, you check your watch and see that it is 9.27 a.m. If you used a pencil to keep score, you will now switch back to pen and enter the end time of the set in the end box using international time of 09.27. You then circle the last exit score for each team in the service rounds box. For red, this would be 25, and for blue, it is 23. You then want to T-bar the unused points in the points column for each team. This is done by drawing a horizontal line under the last point scored for each team and a vertical line through all of the unused points. You will then enter the winning team and their score, which is red with a score of 25, followed by the losing team blue and their score of 23 in the results section of the score sheet. You should check over the score sheet to make sure it is complete and to make sure that you have properly recorded the winning and losing teams. At the end of the second set of the match, enter those scores also. At the completion of the match, you will enter the match winner and the set results. Red won this match two sets to one set. When you feel that all is correct, you will sign your name on the sheet. The last step will be to have the first referee sign the sheet after he or she checks it over and ensures that all is correct. 
Congratulations, you have successfully completed keeping score for this set. Let's take a look at some other aspects of keeping score. As you saw at the beginning of the clinic, a different score sheet will be used any time a match goes to a deciding set. For the most part, you will keep score exactly as you did on the regular score sheet, with a few exceptions that we will cover in the next few slides. The heading section will be exactly as it was for the first sets of the match. It is important to transfer over any sanctions or remarks that are noted on other sheets used in this match, since sanctions carry through for the entire match. You will also want to make sure the official section is filled out and that you record the set number in the appropriate box below the official section. After the coin toss, the referees inform you that red is going to occupy the bench to your left to start the set and that blue will be serving from your right. You will write red in both team boxes on the left and far right sides of the score sheet and also put the letter B in the appropriate circle since red is team B in this match. You will write blue in the team box in the middle section of the sheet and note that they are team A. Then X the R denoting that red will receive serve and X the S showing that blue will serve first in the deciding set. And remember to write the third X in the first round service box under position one for red since they are not serving to start the set. When you receive the lineups, enter red's lineup in the lineup section on both the left and far right sides of the sheet, including the liberos and the captain. You will then enter blue's lineup in the middle section, including their libero and captain. Since you have already learned how to keep score, let's move ahead to the time when there are differences in keeping score on the deciding set score sheet. You're in the middle of the third set between blue and red. You will notice that you are keeping score as normal with red on the left and blue on the right. The score is currently 7-7, seven to seven, and you can see that at 0-0, zero, zero, red substituted number 2 in for the captain number 5. This substitution was noted on both the left and right sides of the score sheet in the score substitution section and in the total substitutions row where the 1 was slashed to show it was the team's first substitution in this set. Since number 5 was the captain, the second referee asked the coach who the new playing captain will be. When the second referee told you that number 2 is the playing captain, you entered this number in the captain section on both the left and right sides. You also noted the timeout by red, which occurred at 0-4 to four in the appropriate box on both the left and right sides. And of course, blue substitution was noted only in the middle section of the score sheet. There are a couple of scenarios of what you will record at the 8th point, depending on which team reaches 8 first. In this first scenario, number 14 serves the ball and red wins the rally. You will first slash the 8th point in red's point column, and then record red's score of 8 in the points at change circle next to their team name in the right section. You will also slash the 8th point in red's point column on the right side. You will not enter an exit score in the check service round box on the left side of the score sheet since number 14 will continue to serve after the court switch. You will then transfer the last exit score from the left to the right side of the sheet, but not the corresponding check mark. Let's take a look at the second scenario. It is still 7-7 seven to seven and red number 14 contacts the ball for serve. Blue wins the rally, giving them .8. You first record the exit score of 7 in the checked service round box and slash point 8 in blue's point column. You then record the score of 7 in the points at chain circle next to red's team name in the right section of the sheet and slash point 7 in red's points column on the right. Finally, you will transfer red, red's last service round's exit score from the left to the right section, but again, do not transfer the corresponding check mark. You can see that the next time red serves, number two will be their correct server. At the end of the deciding set, you will complete the score sheet as you did the previous sheet by circling the final exit scores and placing a T-bar over the remaining points and only the right two points columns. You will not T-bar any unused points on the left. You complete the results section just as you would for any other set, making sure you have the correct team winning the match, that you sign the score sheet, and then have the first referee sign. 
Thank you for viewing the AAU Scoring Clinic. Have a great season.